to Jermaine Unnatural. I am Jermaine. Wait, where's the part at? Oh, Jermaine Riot. <laughs> so as you saw by the title, we are getting into some history. We are getting into the history of the wash and go, the style that has been the talk. Like it's always been controversial because some have centered it as the center of texturism within the natural hair community. A mess. It's a hot mess. And she knows it, though. Um, within the past, what, year and a half, two years, it has been the center of controversy more than normal uh, because of particular methods that are detrimental to people's hair by people. <laughs> a style that you know, some deem as being the easiest way to style natural hair. It me. Um, and it is a style that some are still trying to master. Beep. And remember that any videos that pop up above are always linked down below in the description box and sometimes on the end cards for you to check out after this one, along with any, any links uh, that would support the channel. So everything's always on the description box. Let's see how it came to be a wash and go and very specifically the natural hair community. I did some digging, I did some reading. What do the people say? Research. Google. <laughs> you know, and, all, and also uh, what really made me want to do this video is, as many of you may and should know, and if you don't check him out, beep, African Hair God has mentioned several times on his lives that the wash and go is actually, we, that, that full natural hair people have, or black people, kinky curly hair people are trying, we were trying, that we are trying to make this white style our own or that it was derived from white people. So I'm like, was it really? And I'm like, I didn't know that. So I'm like, well, let me, y'all know I'd be inquisitive. I'm Looking into this, it's a little fuzzy. <laughs> it's a little fuzzy on how we, us, came into calling this a wash again. So we're going right on into the 60s. We have the Black Panthers, we have the Civil Rights Movement that's happening, and as a part of the rebellion, uh, getting out of the previous years of having to mold our hair permit, I'm sorry, not permit, but relax our hair and do all of these different things to fit into society. The rebellion was wearing our natural hair as it was. So that's when you started seeing the round afro picked out to capacity, the fist, like it was a whole thing. And of course, you know, the pics came along later, but you know, it was a whole look. Now in that time, you did have some people that did it in their own way, they still were for the people, they still were rocking their afros, but there would be pockets of seeing people where it was a curly fro. So you still got some of the texture. So you would see it picked out, but you would still see some of the definition there in opposed to the large round. We saw this in the likes of Diana Ross on occasion back then. We saw this in Pam Greer, as far as like people in the movies um, and on TV. And every once in a while you did see it in one of the civil rights leaders at the time, which was Miss Angela Davis. Uh, you would get big but textured fro. So then we move into the 70s. So 70s, we start seeing it a little bit more. Some of those same icons, we are starting to see a little bit more definition, um, a little bit more defined curls. The disco queen, Donna Summers. <laughs> was one of the people that we started seeing with more defined curls on television. We as though I was there, I wasn't even there. I wasn't even thought of. <laughs> um, but you know, at that time, if you were alive, then Donna Summers was one of the, you know, main people or biggest people that was really huge, you know, pop culture wise that had natural curls, defined natural curls showing. And the civil rights was still going on. So you did still get that combination of bigger, curlier froze with showing some more texture. So now that we have, you know, boogie oogie on through the 70s and we've got more definition, still a combination of afros happening, we, we usher our way on into the 80s. The 80s did bring us more icons, more images on television of people that was giving us more defined natural hair. If you were around in the 80s, it me. Then we definitely watched the Cosby show, right? <laughs> yep. 
and the natural child of the Cosby Show, which we've never really got explanation as to why Denise and Sandra were so light-skinned compared to the other kids, but oh my gosh, fan lore is so fun. But we got to see Denise Huxtable, AKA Lisa Bonet, rocking natural hair. Now we didn't see that until season three when she had the natural hair. And with the older sister, Sandra, AKA Sabrina LeBeau, we didn't see her natural curly hair until like a season or two later, like season five, season six, something like that, later into the 80s. So we're seeing it more on television now, and I'm sure that there are probably others that I just can't think of right now, but those were the ones that popped to my head more immediately. So now we're moving into our hip hop parade. Oh, the 90s. Hip hop is coming in. Of course, with every generation, the hairstyles are, you know, changing. The trends are changing. So the 90s, we got a lot more box braids, but natural hair was still in the mix of everything. And between the 80s and the 90s, between, between the 70s and the 80s, actually, the folks who were giving us more definition, and you did see it also in the 90s, it went from being called an Afro to just a natural, is what it was called. It was a natural. Oh, you've got a natural. Uh, I know that because I have ha I've had people comment on my hair that were older and that's what they called it. They referred to it as a natural. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, it's kind of that spoken word of history. Um, of learning things and how they were, or, you know, how they were called or what things are called at the time. And I've gotten that more than one time when they're like, oh, I like your natural. Always an older person that, ha that has said that to me. So I'm like, okay. So it was not always an Afro, but at some point in time, it turned into a natural, the natural. So now that we are in the 90s, we're starting to see a lot more natural hair in our image with, with images. On television with artists, we have Khalees, who's to date, hair is still iconic. We had Freddie, AKA Cree Summers, on A Different World. We had other stars like Tia and Tamara, pockets of um, Hillary and Ashley Banks on The Fresh Prince. Uh, and if you were a little bit older, you got small pockets of also from Saved by the Bell, Lark Voorhees. Every once in a while, in the early, early, like the first season, she rocked her curly hair. Her used to be so cute. And they're, you know, scrunchies, 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 scrunchies. <laughs> curly hair and scrunchies. <laughs> so we started seeing imagery a lot more. It started to become a lot more of a common thing. And even still, like I remember going to school with people that rocked their natural curly hair. Uh, not everyone was always mixed. <laughs> Y'all ain't my mom's neighbor across the street. I think her mom, her mom was very power to the people, very black center. So she had a, a TWA like my entire childhood. Her daughter, her oldest daughter, did have natural hair, like her natural curls, um, uh, the big curly fro sometimes. Um, and there were a few other people that were around as far as in, in my community that I saw that were rocking, rocking their natural hair. Again, I live in Detroit. Like, there are a few blacker cities for as long as it has been black than Detroit. Yeah, so we're getting more representation. But again, there was no name. It wasn't called a wash and go back then. It was still the natural. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, as we into the 90s, some of y'all are just being, some of y'all just arriving here. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go back a little bit because there is a alternate reality that was happening at the same time as this, which is where I think some of the confusion and where the origin gets fuzzy. Picture it, 1960 something, somewhere in Europe, a young man by the name of Vidal Sassoon was an up and coming hairstylist. Also one of the, today, one of the, if not the most famous hairdresser in the world. He is the creator of the Five Point Haircut. He also is the creator of, not necessarily the creator of the bob, but the way he cut his bobs, it became known as the Sassoon Bob. So you know, it's a big thing when a whole hairstyle gets named after you, and when you are being flown out here and there to cut you know, very famous stars here for movies and television. One of my favorite movies, uh, which is Rosemary's Baby, he actually cut Mia's Fer Mia Farrow's hair. They flew him out specifically to cut her hair because they wanted something iconic and edgy. And that kind of fit the role of the character. So they flew him out to cut her hair. Wow, they're, didn't they just cut this grass like two days ago? <laughs> 
And it's too hot in the space to have the window closed. Sorry, there's going to be background noise. I'll try to reduce it. Uh, but nonetheless, Vidal Sassoon is making his way around as a hairdresser. He's renowned. So his cuts were sometimes described as the wash and wear. The purpose behind that name was that he was like, I want you to be able to wash your hair. And then it's going to fall into this cute cut that I put it into. And it's going to be easy. So the idea was more so the cut and ease of the hair itself because again he foresaw a different future for hair he wanted to be less cumbersome he wanted to be easier and so boom we got bobs interestingly cut shea bobs all over the place he was like let's make it easy let's make it unique we're about to cut these up so it was the wash and wear and of course i'll have links to everything that i've read down below so that you can read them for yourself if you want to. And of course, if you have any different additional information, leave a comment. Let me know if you know something that I ain't said yet. So that's where that came from. And then as he's becoming more and more popular and he's becoming bigger, you know, he's like, well, I should probably create some hair products too. One of the products in the early, early product stages of Vidal Sassoon was a two-in-one called Wash and Go. What's with the two bottles? Gonna wash your hair twice. Funny, it's shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> and that's where I think everything gets it's gotten tangled to this point. And it was just named Wash and Go. Because of course, you wash and it's a two in one. The idea is that you wash and condition your hair and you're all set. You don't have any extra steps. Great hair, no dandruff, just wash and go. Now we do know that that don't work. <laughs> so the name wasn't about style. It was more so about the product and making wash day easier mm. um and that's quote <laughs> is that quoted i think it's quoted did it quote it that way i think so so that's a part where that came from so now let's fast forward so now we're entering into the 2000s we into y2k cell phones are becoming a thing cell phones with cameras are becoming the things blurry cameras that come a thing <laughs> Um, and the people, the, the internet is happening and the people are on the YouTube. So we're in the early mid 2000s. We're looking at people like Narada, African Hair God, Napsho85, Black Onyx. I didn't, I wasn't on YouTube at that time. So I know that there are a lot of people at that time, that 2007, 8, and 9, that were the pioneers of getting on camera and showing us how to style and work and create products for our natural hair. So everyone in that time, do you know the videos are starting and they're like, I'm gonna attempt a wash and go. I don't, you know, no one talks about the origin of it. It's just, they were doing, twi they were doing braid outs, twist outs, and they were doing wash and goes. We just see our trendsetters are on YouTube. They're showing us how to do our hair, how to style it, what they're doing it. We're getting the early stages, the beginning of product reviews uh, for, the, so, and you know, they walked so that we could run. <laughs> but you know, we just, we jumped into wash and goes. Uh, Bianca Renee was also a little bit around that time as well. So, um, you know, we, we have that there, but there's really no real explanation as to why they were calling it wash and goes. And you know what? Narada might watch this. Narada, why do you call it a wash and go? Where do you hear it from? Who told you that? <laughs> Do tell in the comment section and like the video too. Um, <laughs> now here's what I speculate, what I think that happened between the 90s and the 2000s. At that time, Carol's Daughter was founded in 1993. Bet after then, you had a whole lot of, a few other brands that were coming out that were geared toward natural hair. What I think is what happened is that the brands, when they would use their styling products, they would call the style a wash and go. That's just what I think. Just like every other style has been named boho braids, passion twists, like how do who, people come up with names? Like stuff exists because people came up with it. <laughs> Sometimes it's based off of a name like Ford, <laughs> Buick. <laughs> Typically, it normally does it normally does link to something that the person has either dreamed up or something that's personal to them. And I think that that's how we came into calling our hair in this style a wash and go. I think that it was created by the people of the early 90s and the 2000s, the brands that were making styling products, and they styled the hair this way to get it to define and was like, we're going to call it a wash and go. With the boo you know, it's still controversial. You can't just wash and go. It takes all day. 
Okay, lies. <laughs> lies. You can wash and go your hair. Now, do you want it to be defined? And how defined do you want it to be? Because you can shampoo and condition your hair and throw a leave-in and an oil in it. That's a wash and go. Thanks. You can wash and condition your hair, throw a curling cream in it and an oil and get definition. That's still a wash and go. And it don't take all day to do. <laughs> I've done it. I do it all the time when I'm not recording. It takes me an hour and a half to two hours depending on what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> it'll happen. It's not an all day process. And that's with, you know, also and that's including dry time. Oh, and remember that I've got that, um, oh, it'll be linked down below. My link for the Max Auto uh, Max One Pro hair dryer. The code 30 Jermaine, 30 Jermaine, ends tonight. So make sure you get on that. It's a really good, really good uh, dryer. You can stack the coupon with the Amazon coupon. Stacks, stacks on stacks on stacks. Um, so yeah, make sure you get on that ends tonight. Uh, I have the link down below. I, I think that that's how we got here. There's There was nothing that said... Officially, this is called a wash and go. You know, just like we call twist outs, twist outs. Well, where did we get that from? Who took to it? You know, people have been braiding hair forever, but who took the twist out first and was like, oh, this is gonna be a style. I'm gonna call it a twist out or a braid out. I really think it's the marketing thing from the brands, but it could have just been that someone called the style that and it took. To sum it all up, where did the natural hair community get the name wash and go from? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's not really hard, clear evidence of how we adapted this style and call it it a wash and go. It's not. There's nothing cut and dry that says that we we deemed it as this. There's nothing. Uh, just I can only speculate, put pieces together on what makes sense with time and experiences and hearing things and seeing things and just I pieced it together and this is my conclusion that I have come up with. Now if you have your own conclusion, let me know in the comments down below. If you got something that'll date it or say, hey, I know X, Y, and Z happened on this day and provide receipts because I'm gonna always ask, well, where did you learn that from? Or where did you get that from? Because I just, I like to. Did you hear the term the natural uh, by older people uh, referred to when you had hair like this? Because that's how I originally knew it as a natural. Yeah, let me know. Give me thoughts and opinions down below in the description box. In the meantime, we're gonna keep wash walking our wash and goes or some have actually started to get away from that name um, just because they, you know, people again, it, it's not a wash and go, it's not, it's more to it. Now, some have started to get away from the name wash and go because they're like, it's not a wash and go, which if you do it right, it really can be. And I guess people are like, well, you have to detangle. Well, people with straight hair get tangles in their hair and they have to detangle their hair too sometimes. And also depending on how they have worn it, it may be tangled or matted. Like, it, it, some people have started to call it a wash and style, whatever. You know, wash and go, wash and style, we know what it all means. It's defined here uh, to some extent. But yeah, it's, that's, so here we are. That's where we are 2024. All of the controversy and changes and everything that has come with it. We have this style that has a bit of a fuzzy, not definite, uh, not able to pinpoint a real history behind it, but context clues can help us to draw some conclusions on how we got here. So yeah, I thought this was fun. I thought it was share, especially since I mostly wear wash and goes or wash and styles, whatever you want to call it, or the natural, however you want to call it. <laughs> Shout out to Classy for the style. A little good in, her, in the middle part here this time, a little thrown this way. Just shout out to Classy uh, for the inspiration. Happy birthday to you too. So yeah, that's that's how we that's how I think we got here. Uh, like I said, share whatever you think down in the description box. All right, make sure that you like this video, press the red subscribe button. You know, I've always got something to share. <laughs> I've always got something to share. Feel free to share this out as someone may find this interesting. Oh, 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 and I did see another video. It was a short on like, it, and it was the same thing. Like how do we get to wash and goes? And it was interesting. It brought up slavery and it kind of made, it felt a little bit more, I didn't get what I needed if we're gonna talk about the history of something. I'll say it like that. Um, so hopefully this kind of gives a little bit more into the unknown because again, 
There's nothing that states a direct date or time as to when we adapted the term for this style. Uh, so yeah, Shamai might find it interesting to share it out. Punch the notification bell so that you can stay abreast of when I post my videos. And again, thank you for tuning to Duran Unnatural. I'll see you in the next one.